When I joined Atlanta Writers Club uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, I was very intrigued by Mrs. Wiley. And when I started looking into it, I couldn't find much. And that got me more intrigued. Laura Isabel Moore was born in Alabama in 1858 to Thomas Polk and Augusta Ellis Moore. I think the first thing that attracted me to her was that she was born near Mobile, Alabama, and that's where I was born. One source said that she came to Atlanta about 1866 with her mother and her grandfather. Her father had died when she was five months old. In 1877, Lolly Bell married Hart Wiley. They had two daughters. I'm not exactly sure how they met, but I imagine Atlanta's social circles were much smaller when she was growing up. Well, she had 10 years of, of marriage, right? And in this 10 years, she had two children. And then her husband died quite suddenly after the 10 years of marriage. I believe she was 27 years old when she became a widow. After the death of her husband, Mrs. Wiley took a job as society editor at the Atlanta Journal, thus becoming the first woman to have a paid position on a daily newspaper in the South. The Atlanta Journal uh, found out that she was very interested in spreading literary interest within the white women community. Uh, and that's how she got started. The family knew a man named Hoke Smith, who later became a governor of Georgia. At that time, he was connected with the Atlanta Journal. And Lolly used to tell the story that she came, the first book of her poems were published the day that her husband died. That got her to thinking, well, maybe I can sell this book. Her published books of poetry were Legend of the Cherokee Rose in 1887 and The Arcade in 1916. She wasn't going to rely on working for the Atlanta Journal Society Department the rest of her life. She wanted her own paper. So uh, there is a story about in 1891, she's on the streetcar. She meets this woman, and her name is Effie. Erwin Williams, and they get to talking. And so they went in business. And eventually, um, I don't know how long after that, they set up a office on Alabama Street. Lolly Bell Wiley edited two small periodicals titled The Butterfly and Society. She wrote numerous poems and short stories and composed the music for the State Song of Georgia. In 1922, a song called Georgia, with the lyrics by a man named Robert Loveman and music by Lolly Bell Wiley, became the state song for Georgia. And it was the state song for Georgia up until Ray Charles sang Georgia on my mind to the Georgia legislature. In 1914, Lolly Bell organized the Atlanta Writers Club with Kate Ross to encourage Atlanta writers to develop their craft and market their products. We were founded in 1914 uh, by a small group of writers. Uh, Ms. Wiley was one of the founding members and an early president. We were founded to serve as a, a social network for area writers and also as an educational organization to teach our members about the craft and business of writing. And it is the very first literary organization in the South. When we were founded, it really was an elite literary organization. These literary evenings that she organized, of course there was music, there was good dinner, and there was, there was high society there, and you had to have an invitation to enter even. If you were asked to be a speaker, uh, you were introduced by one of the members. 
And my sense is it was primarily men that were recognized writers, but Ms. Wiley was one of the real groundbreakers. Certainly there were women writers and certainly there were women members, but I think that it was favored more towards the males. She moves on beyond Atlanta to the national scene of things during her lifetime. Her daughter wrote a long story about her life. She only talks about her mother's achievements, her mother's uh, you know, life, contacts, uh, who she helped and, and what she all came up with because she came up with all these brilliant ideas of, of uh, supporting, like for instance, uh, planting the trees at Piedmont Park. The Atlanta Press Club planted a tree on November 28, 1926, three years after Lolly Bell's death, honoring her contributions. The idea of planting trees to honor successful Georgia writers in Piedmont Park was originally Mrs. Wiley's. My sense of her is that she was a risk taker. I've never got indications that her ego was out ahead of her. Lolly Bell Wiley is remembered for her creative contributions through journalism, poetry, music, and environmental projects. Her roles both as a professional writer and as a mother reflect her self-esteem and the belief that a woman can make a difference in her community by giving something back.